day. Harry Houdini here, and look, we're going to do something a little bit different in this episode. I've just had a shit day, and I really needed cheering up. So I took a bit of a drive down to my local um, hobby store and had a look in their uh, bargain bin. And lo and behold, for three shekels, look, I managed to score that. Do you know what this is? This is basically a tracked motorcycle. It's Raman from Vard Vard 2. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, look, I'll put it a bit closer. There's a freaking steering wheel on the way. Can you see that? Look, it is mighty. This is something unusual and different. And I was so excited while I'm waiting for my curry, because I'm picking up a curry on the way home, as you do. So while I'm picking up my curry on the way home and he's in there cooking it, um, at the moment, he's killing all the vegetables and making up my Bombay Alu. Anyhow, um, I thought I'd do an in-car review. How about that? All right, so let's have a quick look at the instructions. This was a bargain. Only three shekels. I mean, I usually rummage around the um, the bins, the, the, the bargain bins, and sort of have a look in the um, stores. This one is really a toy store, but they've got models here, and occasionally I drop in. I'm out and about. Anyhow, um, yeah, right in the back, covered in dust, three shekels. And um, it was still in its plastic bag, never been opened. So it's a it's a kitten crate, right? Basically, as you can see, it's it's a oh the fucking thing sliding off the seat. This is the worst car review I've ever done. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a motorcycle, but it's got tracks, right? It's they're amazing things, you know. Um, I'd love to have one of these if I could really find one in real life, you know. It's gonna be great. Go do the shopping in that. Yeah, you get a park. You just drive over anything. Get out of my bloody way. All right, so it's a Dragoon, as you can see. It's a uh, 3945 series. So that generally is pretty good. It's, uh, according to scale mates, it's 2003. We've got slip sliding away here, so we won't fight that. There is a ton of plastic in this thing. Look at this, one sprue, two sprues, three sprues, um, four. Um, they're the wheels. These are apparently the workable track links. I kid you not, this thing's got wing little track links. I mean, look at the size of them compared to my finger. That's right, they're probably no worse than bloody um, a Panzer II in some ways. But they are workable. By the time you put all these wheels and these links on, apparently it all works. And then you've got some string and <laughs> some decals. And it looks like you've got, um, yeah, you've got some, some, some ordnance there. It, it, it's, it's a gun of some sort. There's a couple of them, yes. There's a couple of rifles. There you go. Shooting zans. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um... So here's the instructions. So what we'll do is I'll get a better camera angle here because it's a little bit squeezy here in my car. As you can see, nice leather upholstery. Um, but um, let's let's have a look at these instructions. Here we go, nice and flat. All right, let's go on with this. Nice little pick there of what we're going to get. It's got some sort of cable thing. I think it's what the string was all about. I probably won't use that string. I'll probably use a proper cable. I've got one flying around here somewhere. So A, B, three of those Bs are the track links. B, two. Or two, two of those B ones, which are the wheels. Two of the lovely wheels over here. And um, E, F, G. Uh, the G is basically a whole lot of um, fellas that you're going to put on here. In fact, there's, there's five figures in this. Five! Five Shermans! Yeah! I don't know what five is. What's five in German? Five! Um, and there you go. C -suit. So not a lot of blue out, really. It's only the... Um, you know, there's a little shovel here, you don't use the shovel, and um, a bit of sort of arms and legs and things say, well, we don't need those. Um, basically, you use the whole kit, which is which is very unusual for a dragon. That's pretty bloody good. So um, this was probably the second second run of this. There's a there's a one prior to this, and they've released a couple of upgrades afterwards. They just got different options. So um, let's let's get into it, hey? Let's let's see what it's all about. Now, um, engine. Bloody thing comes with an engine, which is terrific, you know. Which, being a motorbike, you know, usually motorbikes kits do. And um, there you go. There's that kit. We're in um, Sprue A here. It's already had a look. There's your engine. That's that's lovely. You know, the detail on that is not bad. Not bad. That's going to take a wash. And there's there's all kinds of things. I don't know how much of it will be shown, but it'll be fun to do. Um, there's the the two body halves there, which are going to go in. Uh, over here on step three, um, there's a lot going on. I mean, you have a look. There's quite a bit here. There's footsteps and transmissions and bits and pieces and do's and dods. And there's his seat, you know. Um, okay, so moving along to these steps. Well, there, there's the halves that go on, which I showed you. They're all here in uh, in sprue A. Like it's basically all sprue A here for a while. And um, then you've got the seats. Well, they're on there as well. Everything looks it looks it looks pretty good. You know, there's there's some detail there. You got to wash out of that. I don't know if you can see that. There you get a wash out of that little bugger. And, um, you know, all the uh, injection marks and all the rest of it, it's all on the arse side. You won't see that. 
No, it's all hidden with the nanny paper. <laughs> so that's all looking typical dragon. I mean, usually their their kits are good. Oh, you know, especially the later ones. I'm really impressed with them. So moving along there, you've got swing arms go on. Look at that that's for your your veals. Swing arms. We're moving into number B now. now there's quite a lot of sprues of B. Um, so they're all little links, and they are tiny, but the um, the cut points are nice and easy. Straight across, straight across. So really, they should come off fairly well. They do have little shoes, so there's. There is an element of fiddliness with this, but um, we'll see how we go. We'll see, you know, there's um, some more bits there. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit fiddly, but I'm sort of looking forward to the challenge. I think it'll be quite fun. And they're workable by all accounts, so that'll be good. And wheels, love my wheels. Wheels are all good, all nicely detailed. Um, be very interesting to see if they will rotate and um, these these links will actually move along. That would be fun, wouldn't it? That would be good. We'll see when we build it. And we will be building it. We'll get a start on it tonight. Okay, so that's basically this step. It's going to be all your wheels and all your links. See, there they go. Links fit together. Click, click, click. Shoes go in. Um, they must be the swing arms or the other things we're looking at there. And um, then you've just got your front suspension and your wheel. That's probably all back on... One of the other sprues here. Oh, actually, that's on spruce C, which we haven't had a look at yet. So spruce C, that wheel is just mighty. Let's um, see if you can see that one. Look at that wheel. Isn't that lovely? All the tread on it, and um, it it looks really good. It's even got a little valve stem, right? So because it's a solid, solid wheel sort of thing, and then it's got this tiny little valve stem in there. That's just beautiful. It's really nice. And then you get, um, here's... Here's one of your uh, your characters, because this is pretty well the standard kit, I think. So um, this is the the rider, or the you know I kind of like to call them drivers when it's a bike. But then again, it has got track legs, so it could it could be a it could be a, a driver, yes, a driver on the thing. So there, and there's um, that looks like sort of some that's part of your front suspension assembly. So that's all good. So yeah, there's your seat, and there's that's your um your, some shockies, I imagine. It looks like some front shocks or something like that. Who knows? We'll find out. All right, and then you get onto these, which are drums. So this is all on um, another sprue, which is um, an extra sprue, an extra special sprue. They sneak in here for you. So this is um, sprue E, which is E for extra, you see? And um, this is where these drums go, and they sort of want you to wind the cotton on there. But, but I've actually got some cable, and I've got quite a bit of cable. I bought a whole stack of generic sort of um, tow cable, and I think it's about the same width, and it might look a lot nicer. So that goes on there, and you can build this whole mechanism up, and then you've got all your guys, you know, doing various things. And um, those those characters, they they, they look interesting. Um, you know, it's they're dragon. They're, they're not bad. They're not bad at all. I think they're as good, if not better, than the trumpeter ones that I did from Erisani. But we'll see. When we put them together, we'll see if they actually anatomically face the right way. This is all very nice. Look, this is this is quite lovely here. So yeah, we've got all that. And um, there's another sprue here as well. And you get more wheels. So these are special wheels, special wheels. And you get this little cattle prod here. Oh, we'll figure out what that is. And some more arms and legs. So this is an additional sprue. This is um, sprue F. So you've got E and F in this, which are the extra frickin' stuff for this kit. All right, enough of this. Okay, we've seen all that. And that's it. There's 14 steps. That's it. Then it says paint it. It says paint it the grey, the pond the grey. Or you can't do the camo. Okay? Probably do camo. That looks like fun. I'm going to glue some of this together tonight. So as soon as my curry's ready, I think he's, he's calling me now, actually. As soon as that's done, I'm going to get this home, start cutting it up, and we'll try out a few parts, and we'll see how it is. Because I think a review would be much better if we actually try and assemble some of it. And then it's more like a review kind of fitting job, you know, fitting, schnitting. Like, it's not like you go buy shoes. You've got to try the suckers on. <laughs> so let's do that. All right, um, I'll just uh, go get my curry, and I'll see you in a couple of minutes, and we'll be home. Step uh, one has gone together fairly well. Well, I've got the parts mainly, uh, the two halves of the motor. Uh, fairly, fairly good fit. The um, edges were a little bit out. It was worse on the bottom, but it turns out that whole bottom gets covered anyway with a plate. There's plate A20, um, which is over here, which is um, going to go on. And you know, by the time we put the motor in there, we're not going to see any of those bits and pieces. So there's um, sort of the worst of the fits are on the bottom. I started trying to clean them up and I'd accidentally cut off what looked like the sump plug. I was sort of cutting off sprue points and this one looked like a sprue point. And it, it is here. 
Um, and I kept it because <laughs> I went, oh, I don't think I'm supposed to cut that off. I was trying to remember where it was connected because there's so many little bumpy bits on here. It was hard to know what were those sprue points that I cut off. But as I said, you won't see any of that because it's all basically getting hidden. But I thought I'd show you um, if you do have a, a, a mistake or an accident, it's, it's fairly easy to fix. So um, I've got the part there and all I'm going to do is put a dab of Tamiya Thin using my wax pencil. I'll grab that little part and then I can pop it back in place and using my knife I'll just straighten it up and you're saved nearly just doesn't want to sit straight there we go I just managed to get a hair in there but we'll cut that out later <laughs> so the hair is a little bit of glue it's hard to tell but there you go. Um, the principle is you can, um, if you just cut off a piece and you go, oh no, and it's a tiny little bit, well, save it. Your cut should be pretty well um, nice and clean because you've just done it before you sand. Um, get your cement in there, pick up the part, wax pencil perfect for this, pick up that tiny part, put it back on and let it set. And even to be absolutely sure that's, um, that's gone in, the beauty of this Tamiya Thin is you can kind of splodge it around and um, give it a blow, at least here in my climate, and I can give it a blow and the um, capillary action means that'll go in there and it'll completely cement the whole thing back in and you won't even be able to tell that it's been cut off. So, problem solved. Alright, I've got a few little bits here to um, to put on and we'll see how they go and, um, and then uh, we'll get on to step two. come together really nicely and that was certainly a lot easier than the halves which did require that little sanding. As you can see all that fiddling and faffing underneath was pointless because all that gets hidden and um, what I thought was a sump plug actually turns out to be a centre um, center little um, sort of lug there so that uh, conjoined to that base plate so as I checked that out so don't worry about that even if I cut it off it wouldn't matter so yeah, don't worry too much about the underside of that. Um, the top of it, yeah, you do need to sort of tidy those up. This, um, I assume that's sort of a carburetor type arrangement or something like that. Well, that's a carb there and maybe that's an air filter, I don't know. Looks like that sort of thing. My understanding of motorbikes. I wonder if this is a BMW. I don't know. Looks like it. Looks like a little um, straight up and down VW4. That's what they look like. Um, right, well, I'll keep going. Um, there's um, some other bits to do. Now I thought I'd show you this, because I'm about to cut out this part here, this part A16 I think it is, and um, I've got these snappy new um, cutters, they're called um, um, Mini Shima. Now um, they go under various different names, um, but what they are is they, they shear cut and they're a hell of a lot sharper, they're a hell of, certainly a lot more accurate and precise than um, say the uh, sprue cutters I have been using for the last few years, which is just your run of the mill, you know, ones you buy, and they're okay, they do the job, but um, you're always sort of cutting a million miles away from anything, because um, when you get up close, you, um, you'll you bugger it, these don't, watch this, and take two on the cutting, because the iPad stand collapsed, <laughs> right in the middle of the cut, the parts still come out perfect, but what I thought I'd show you again is, okay, these, um, these little guys, you know, they say you'd normally cut well away, and then trim with your knife, well you don't have to do that with these, these little mini shimmers, you get in really close, right, hard up against that part, right, and you warmly wouldn't do that, you go, no, no, cut, all right, and it's like a little micro shear sort of thing, cut, and those parts are not damaged, that cut, sometimes you can get it, it's just about requires no sanding, okay, so those cuts are fine, in fact, they require a tiniest bit There you go. Voila. That's it. So that saves you a lot of mucking around and grief and all the rest of it. So that's that one. So again, in with my trusty nail file. Done. And there's no distortion to the plastic. No bending and twisting and all the rest of it. These things cut beautifully. And um, Will Patterson's got a uh, fantastic little um, video. I'll, I'll try and put a link on the end of, um, of basically all about these little cutters. And that's, that's where I got the... Um, 
got the idea from to buy them and I sort of went, wow, here's a little bit different America, um, or wherever he's from, I think he's a Texan. Howdy there, Will, if you're watching. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> I'll get clobbered next time he sees me. Um, so there you go, those um, those little cutters, they're mighty. And look at that, you, know, you just cut your part off close to the, um, off the sprue close to it, a little tiny bit of cleanup, you're away, you can start gluing. So here we are, I've got um, those little, look like foot pads and the pedals are on and the seat's on and could be a gear shift. Um, so it's all starting to come alive really. So that's everything in um, sections one and two completed. Now moving on to part three, there's um, call on the instructions here, I'm going to put the sides on, but there's call here to do some drilling because these... Um, these side parts. We're going to need some little holes here because later on there's um, some mountings here which is all for this uh, this big sort of cradle thing here for the, for the cables, for those big drums. So that's what I've got to do now and if you've never done this sort of thing before uh, quite often the kit on the reverse side, the side that you don't see, they'll have little locating holes. See? Dragon does this. So you've just got to make sure you pick the right ones and follow the instructions carefully and look ahead and see where it's actually going to mount. Make sure the instructions are correct. <laughs> so a little bit of checking and then you'll need a, a pin vise if you haven't got one. It's just a little handhold little divot which you can put a tiny drill bit in. Right, I've got those holes drilled through and then what you do is you've got another little part here that goes over that hides all of that. That's why you have to put the holes in now. And that attaches there with three little um, three little tubes. Now there's a series of business here where there's going to be a top. And that top isn't in the instructions until later on. This can catch you out. Okay. Um, I always look ahead with Dragon, in fact any kit I'm building really. So when I've got two side pieces going together like that and then they leave a gap, I'm thinking what's in the gap? And you've only got to look down here at step five and here's the piece in the gap. Similarly here at the front there's, um, there's this piece which I've assembled. I had you put this part and this part together but it was kind of wobbly and I was thinking well again I need to check how the top's going to go on because this top part is not in the instructions again to step five which is kind of silly because that that and that are all part of this this and this and so that all needs to mate up and join together so what I've done is I've jo jumped past step four and I've gone back of that and I've realized what I really need to do is get the spacing correct for these um, these parts so that all this whole assembly can join together so I've got all those pieces there now I've dry fitted everything as, as I went to make sure that um, um, you know, if I, if I glued these these ones in, I dry fit the top piece in to get the spacing correct. And then once I'm sure that all the little side pieces are right, I know my top's going to fit on perfectly. So that's just a little Harry Houdini tip. You may know that. You may go, well, that's obvious, isn't it? Well, some people it isn't. It wasn't obvious to me when I cocked up a few times when I was younger. Tell you. Anyhow, let's, um, let's get going. I'll get this all together and um, then we'll see if we can really see any of that engine. And here we have it. It, um, it's just a dry fit, that's why my fingers are on here because I've only cemented these fenders up and say so I've, I've basically built it so that it's almost like I can pull the, pull the rolling chassis out and then I've got the, um, the top pass comes off, you know, like, like you would with an automobile, you can rip the top off and you've got, um, yeah, you've got two different sections. Now, interestingly, the motor has disappeared, right? Well, not entirely. Not entirely. So we can still pop that up and we can still see that motor. So my theory here is, and this is where it all falls apart, uh, so we'll just dry fit it. So the seats come out and voila. Okay, now I probably wouldn't recommend doing what I've done because I was bloody fiddly. Because really to get to get this on it probably would be an advantage to um, 
cement it to the front there and then build the whole thing around, which is kind of what they say in part three, right? So in part three, put that on, cement that around. And that would, and if you want to, if you don't want to do what I want to do is paint that separately, um, that will work. Um, just, just as long as you dry fit your top pieces, right? To make sure that they're actually going to fit later. So you could do it that way, but I wanted this separate because this is going to be one color and this is going to be a different color. Okay, because this is basically going to be greys and blacks and I'll probably paint the seat a nice little leathery color or something. I don't know, I'll have a look at some photos, see what I can find, but you know, I'll just be creative. It'll be what I want it to be. And you may notice this little foot piece, right, sits up pretty hard against the center and this little foot piece doesn't. And you think, oh, you've just got it in wrong, Harry, you didn't. Well, no, I haven't, because there's only one way to get it, because there's a locating pin there, right? So if I did this again, I'd probably remove that locating pin and slide that over just a bit so that it all sits a bit more central. And then that'll get these, um, these two little knobbly bits here, get them out, because they've got to fit into, where well, we can actually see it, inside here. There's one there one there and um, oops that's just a little hingy fubby thing so that um, that's a little bit of a problem with this that you don't really find out till later and also this is a this is a little bit tricky here to fit um, I'll probably do some filler there and also these joins here don't made up exactly they're not too bad but I'll probably just put some surfacer in there and fix that up but it's small it's fiddly it's getting late for me anyway I'm probably probably a bit tired but all these parts went on really well and and overall Really good fit, um, generally speaking, and um, you know, the fact is that I could do this trick is a testament that it actually does all fit together nicely. So there you go. So there you are. So I will be able to see my motor. It's going to be hidden underneath this little thing here. Now I suppose the reason why they left putting those on till later is that um, if you cemented all that in, uh, you wouldn't be able to get this in because Right. It's got to fit into there, but luckily because mine isn't fully cemented, keep bumping everything in. Um, I'm up to section five, and after that it's wheels, it's wheels and it's wheels and it's tracks and and then it's basically mounting on the um, the uh, oh the front. Well, that's wheels too, the front of the steering. So I'm going to leave it there. That's enough of this video. I think we've accomplished a lot, and essentially um, it's a snappy little kit. Whoop. It's it's a snappy little kit, and it's um it's a lot of fun to put together, and you could follow there instructions and build it that way if you wanted um, just depends what you want to paint and how you want to paint it I'm sort of not very good at painting things in situ um, so coming back later and hand painting all that in there would be a bit hard for me I'd rather have it that I can go <laughs> and I will paint that the colors that I want and then I'll paint this the colors that I want and then assemble it all up but that's just my method all right well, there you go there's our um, kettle gourd. <laughs> She's um, coming along nicely. It's a great little kit, and I hope you enjoy the review and the beginning of the build. That's it for now. I'm going to go make myself some dinner. I think I'll find a curry somewhere in that fridge. All right, it's goodbye from Harry Houdini, and it's Huru from Australia. Mm -hmm.